Hello, sixth grade BIT students. Today we're ready to get started on our new unit seven. This is called Planet Discovery Introduction to Spreadsheets. So to get going, we're gonna to go to modules and you should see a new unit called unit seven in here, Planet Discovery Introduction to Spreadsheets. We're gonna start on the introduction. That's the very first step. And in this project, we're gonna create our first spreadsheet. Now a spreadsheet is like a table that has superpowers. It can help you add, subtract, multiply, find the average of numbers. It can organize your data in alphabetical order. It can allow you to take data numbers that you put into your spreadsheet and you know turn it into graphs so it's easier to display information. And we're gonna make one about our solar system. So with all the news, about how SpaceX has sent a crew of astronauts into space that docked with the International Space Station. NASA and SpaceX are planning to send a crew to colonize Mars and set up a small community on Mars. I wanted to see if we could visit another planet or even live on another planet. How would that affect you know, our daily life? So we're gonna look at some things like how would our age change if we lived on say Jupiter? Or how much would we weigh if we lived on you know, Mercury? So we're gonna use a spread spreadsheet to kind of calculate and figure out some fun stuff like that. And then we're gonna make some graphs to display our results. So when we start this unit, I have a video here that we will watch in class. And if you're not in class or in person, you can watch it on your own. So we're gonna click right here. And something I want you to think about when you watch this video, I've added a few questions is, you know, can you name all the planets in our solar system starting from the sun? What is a year on earth? And we talk about in class that one year is 365 days. So that's how long it takes for our, you know, if this is the sun and earth, that's how long it takes for the earth to make one complete revolution or orbit around the sun is 365 days. And every 365 days, we celebrate a birthday. So if you ever want to be cool, we talked about this kind of as a joke, but your next birthday party you go to, maybe you make a birthday card that says congratulations on completing another trip around the sun, because that's kind of what we're celebrating. So after you watch this movie, you need to take this learning.com lesson. Now this lesson is right down here under the red arrows. You'll click that. You'll click on this lesson. You do exactly what it tells you to do. When you're done with the lesson, you can exit, go back to Canvas, click on grades, and see what grade that you got. So this is the very first thing we're gonna do before we ever make a spreadsheet, is we're gonna work on finishing this learning.com. When we're done, we're gonna go to the very next page. So now we're gonna make our first spreadsheet. Right here where it says what you need to do, we're gonna walk through the steps in this, you know, the directions step by step. And you should find that if you follow the directions and take your time and you just follow them in numerical order, that you're gonna be able to do this really quick. So the very first thing says log into Google Drive, click on the new button, then select Google Sheets. Name this spreadsheet your name planets. So this is the, the first two directions. So I'm gonna go to my Google Drive, I'm gonna click New, and I'm gonna click Google Sheets. And right when it opens, this, this sheet is called Untitled Spreadsheet. So I'm gonna click up there and we're gonna call it your name. So I'm gonna type in my name, Planets. So when we turn this in later on Canvas, that's how you're gonna search for it. it this will be called Your Name Planets. So now we're ready to go back and let's look at the next two. Highlight cells A1 through I1. Click on this Merge Cells button. In the large cell you created, enter the title Planet Discovery by your name. So if we think of this, a spreadsheet is basically like a big bingo. Um, it's a bingo card. You have these columns that go up and down. This is column E, this is column C. You have these rows that go left to right. This is row three. This is row seven. And the area where a column and a row meet, this box is actually called a cell. So we're gonna go through A1 
all the way over it says to I1. So I'm gonna click on that and right up here at the top is this button that and if you put your mouse over it, it says merge cells. And I'm gonna click on that and it take, took all of these cells and made them into one big cell. So I'm gonna type in here, we're gonna call planet discovery by your name. So I'll type David Dean and I just hit enter. And you can see I have this one huge cell. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bold this by clicking the B and right to the right of where it says merge cells, we have this button to center and it's called horizontal alignment. If you put your mouse over it and we're gonna go right here to the center. So we're done, we have a title at the top. So let's keep moving on and I'm going to go to the very next instructions. Highlight A2 through I2. Click format at the top of your screen, then select text wrapping. This will make your titles actually fit in the cells. If you look down here at my example, some of these titles are really big, like gravitational pull compared to earth, period of revolution compared to earth. And notice how these words stack on top of each other. That's what we want to do so that we can fit these big titles into these cells. So watch this really closely. We're kind of doing the same thing, but on row two. We're going to select A2 through I2, just like that. We go up here to the top to where it says format, and I'm going to click on format, text wrapping, wrap. When I click that, nothing happens. But when I start typing in my titles, you're gonna see that every time I move from one cell to the next, it'll wrap that text. So I'm gonna go ahead and bold this, and I'm gonna go ahead and center every title I put in so I don't have to do it later. And now all you have to do to finish step one is just type in each of these titles as you go across the screen, planets, distance in miles to the sun, and diameter in miles. So I'm gonna type those in, planets, distance in miles to sun, diameter in miles, hit tab. Let's look at the next couple. Gravitational pull compared to earth, my weight on earth, my weight on this planet. Notice I'm capitalizing each of these because they are titles. So we're ready for the next couple ones here. My weight on Earth, my weight on this planet, period of revolution compared to Earth, my age on Earth, my age on this planet. So we have period of revolution compared to Earth. And I just hit tab and it goes to the next one automatically. My age on Earth, my age on this planet. And that's it for step one. So let's just go down here to the corner, click next, and we're ready to go to step two. So now you have your spreadsheet, we're ready to move on. Let's go to the next instructions. Now list each planet in order in cells A3 through A10. Don't forget to include Earth. So I'm just gonna go down under planets here and I'm gonna list each planet, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So we're just gonna go over here. I'm gonna go underneath planets. And this time I hit enter to make it go down to the next cell. If you hit tab, it'll move to the right to the next cell. Mercury, Venus, Earth. Boom, so I think we have those. So let's go on to the next step. In cells E3 through E10, simply fill in your weight. Fill in the same weight for each cell. If you don't wanna put your weight, change the column to my pet's weight or if you don't want to put, you don't have a pet, or you don't want to you know, put your pet's weight, just change your title to Mr. Dean's weight and put in 180 pounds for me. So 
I'm gonna go over here. So they're saying where it says my weight on earth. Let's say I wanna use my cat. I have a 10 pound cat. So I'm gonna say my cat's weight on earth. And it's 10 pounds. I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna type in the number 10 right here. And I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna go back on the number 10. And right in the corner, right there is a little blue square. And that lets you copy and fill that number all the way down. So I don't have to type the number 10 eight times. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna drag it down to Neptune and let off. And my cat's weight on earth is 10 pounds. Now don't put any words, don't put the word pounds, don't put anything in there except for the number. So let's go back and look at, you, you know, again, you can put your, your weight, you can put my weight of 180, I put 180 on my example, or you know, you could put, you know, your friend's weight, someone else's. Um, we're done with that. We're ready for H3 through H10. Simply fill in your age, fill in the same age for each cell. So now we're gonna go over here to my age on earth and my age on earth right now is 44. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna click on it again. Remember the little blue square right there so I don't have to type this a bunch of times. I'm gonna drag it down to Neptune, boom. And we're gonna keep going. For distance in miles to the sun in column B, you can look at the example image below to help you out. If you notice your commas in the numbers are disappearing, simply highlight those cells, select format at the top, and then choose number normal. And we'll see if that happens to us. Um, I gave you the diameter in miles right here. I am telling you that you can copy them for me. I already looked them up. Just make sure to put some commas in. The first one is 36 million. The next one is 67,240,000. So we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna type in distance in miles to the sun is three, six, comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. And I'm gonna hit enter. And it kept my commas. What I was gonna say, if you notice it's removing commas, you can highlight these, go to format, go to number and just choose number if you notice that it's not keeping your commas. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and I'm going to type in, we have 67, 240, 000. So 67, comma, 240, comma, 000, hit enter. And the next one, Earth, how far is it to the sun? 92 million. 200,000 miles. So we do 92 comma 200 comma 000 and enter and we just keep going. One Mars is 141,710,141710. So I type in 141 comma 710 comma 000. Make sure I type that right. We got it. The next one, 438-880-000. That's 887 million. We're just getting further and further away from the sun. 887-140. So we hit enter. 887-140-000. Hit enter. The next one is now we're at 1 billion miles away. Uranus, 1 billion. One seven eight three nine eight zero. So one comma seven eight three comma nine eight zero comma zero zero zero. Woo! Oh, I think I missed one. Saturn, um, Jupiter. Where did we miss? Ninety two. Earth, Mars. One seven one seven. Jupiter. 438, oh, that's the one. So we need to move these down a little. Look, I'm just gonna cut these and I'm gonna go down a cell and paste them. We skipped Jupiter for some reason. 438880, 438, 880, 000. We're gonna hit enter. Now we're at Saturn, 887,000,000. Uranus is at 1 billion and then Neptune 2,796,000 
460, wait, 2 billion, 796 million, 460,000 miles away. Two, comma, 796, comma, and I'm just gonna go back and look, I don't remember. 460, comma, 000, zero, zero. hit enter, and we're done. So notice right here it says, your spreadsheet should look similar to the example below, but with your age in there, and then your weight, or your pet's weight, or my weight, or your friend's weight, or whatever you wanna put in if you don't feel comfortable sharing your weight, and that's no problem. So you should have something that looks like this image so far before you move on, and you can see that I do. It looks very similar. So. I'm ready to go to next. And we are now on step three. So for each of the following, be sure to only put numbers in the cells. Don't put miles or earth years. You only want to put data into these numbers, like actual or numbers into these cells, because we're going to use these numbers to do some math. And as you know, you can't really do math with words. So let's leave words out of these cells. In C3 through C10, you need to find each planet's diameter in miles. To find diameter in miles, check out this site. So we got a site called Bob the Alien. That sounds fun. So we're gonna click on that. And we need to find each planet's diameter in miles. That's for C3 through C10 here. So let's find Mercury diameter in miles. We're gonna go check out this Bob the alien. Here's Mercury, look right here's diameter. And we have, that's kilometers, but remember we need diameter in miles, which is 3,031. Diameter in miles is how big around it is to go around the planet. Think of it like the size of your belt. So we have 3,031, and we can go ahead and maybe do two, Venus 7521. So we have three comma 31, hit enter. And then for Venus, we had 7,521. I'm gonna hit enter. Make sure I was right, and I am. Let's go to Earth. Earth is 7,926. You can kind of see why they call Venus Earth's sister planet because they're almost about exactly the same size. 7,926, hit enter. We're on to Mars, 4222, 4,000, comma, 222, hit enter. And now we're to Jupiter, ooh, the giant planet, 88,840. 40, so it's almost 10 times bigger than Earth. 88,846. Hit enter. We only have three more. Saturn, 74,900 miles. Notice I'm not putting the word miles in here because we're gonna, you know, when you do math or like if we're gonna graph, we will graph this if you graph it. Sometimes, you know, you, if you have words in there, it can throw off the graphs. So a lot of times, if you're gonna use these numbers to make graphs or use a formula to do math for you, you don't wanna put words in there. So we're ready for two more. Uranus, 31,763, 31,763 miles in diameter. And finally, Neptune is 30,000 um, 779, hit enter. So now we're ready for the next section. And I said, hey, don't forget to add some commas. In D3 through D10, you need to find out how much of a gravitational pull each planet has compared to Earth. For information about gravitational pull, let's check out, we have Fact Monster. Fact Monster, I was gonna say Fact Meister which would be a cool site as well. Not as neat as Bob the Alien, but let's go to Fact Monster. So let's look. We're looking for the gravitational pull compared to Earth. 
And this site, if you scroll down, look right here, gravitational pull compared to Earth. So this is how much gravity that planet has compared to how much gravity we have on Earth. This is a number we're going to use when we start figuring out how much we weigh, is how much gravity affects us. So we can do a few of these at a time. Mercury, 0.38. Venus, 0.91. Earth, 1. So we'll say a gravitational pull right here, 0.38. Enter, 0.91. Enter, 1. Enter. It even put the zero in for me, so I didn't even have to put the zero. So you can notice Mars and Mercury, they have the same gravity. They're also similar in size, so um, 0.38, 2.36. I'm trying to remember, you know, 2.36. So when you see a number like this that says 2.36, remember how Jupiter was like 10 times the size of Earth. Um, it also has, you know, double the gravity pretty much. So, or more. So we're going to go, we have Saturn 0.91, Uranus 0.89. So they have very similar gravity on those two planets. And our last one, 1.12, and we're not using Pluto, and they're not really sure about the gravity. It's so far away. So 1.12. We are almost done with this step two. Finally, in G3 through G10, you need to find out how long it takes each planet to revolve around the sun in comparison to Earth. So we know it takes 365 days on Earth to get a, a complete orbit or revolution around the sun. Well, let's look at what other planets, how long it takes them in comparison to Earth. This is called the period of revolution, how long it takes. So we're gonna go back to Fact Monster. You're gonna notice this is the same website and it's just right over here to the right. Now notice they put Earth years. Do not type Earth years, please, I repeat. Don't put words in here. So we're gonna start. Mercury is 0.241. Venus is 0.615. This is the period of revolution compared to Earth. 0.241. And I think it was 0.615, and I'm just gonna double check that. Looks good. Earth is one. The reason we're putting one for Earth on both of these is because we're comparing them to Earth. So we're just leaving Earth at one. 1.88, 11.9. So what we're seeing is once we hit Jupiter, when you're going to like 11.9 is the period of revolution, it's basically telling us it's about 11 times longer for Jupiter to travel around the sun than it takes Earth to travel around the sun. So we're getting up to where these planets take a long time. 29.5 for Saturn and 84 for Uranus. Trying to double check, 84, 29.5. Five and 84. Put that number in wrong. And one more, 164.8. There we go. So let's go back. We have finished step three. So as you can see, we have moved right along. We've done step one, we've done step two. When you finish step three, you should have something that kind of looks like this. I'm gonna give you one little fun pro tip. If you notice kind of on my examples um, on Canvas, some of my lines, they show up much darker, the borders of these cells, than they do on here. So if you just highlight your entire table here, just click up on your title and just drag down and that'll highlight everything. And right up here next to where we did the doors, the merged cells, is a thing called borders. And that puts borders and makes them thicker. 
If you want to go ahead and click on that and go right here to the first one that says all borders, it'll put lines around everything and it's just so distinct now and you can see your data table so easy. So that's how you do the first three steps. Um, and now you're ready to move on to step four. So now we're ready to move on to step four of this unit. We just finished looking up some of the data about our gravitational pull, period of revolution. So we're gonna move on to step four and let's just see what it says. And this is kind of fun. Now we're gonna get it to figure out and do some math for us. So to have Excel, which is one choice for a spreadsheet, we're using Google Sheets, but to have it figure out your weight on each planet, you must enter a formula. A formula is just like a math equation. In cell F3, enter, and this is very important, the equal sign, E3 star D3, then hit enter. Remember, and it went over this, I believe, in our, in our learning.com, all formulas must start with an equal sign. So when we do math, we put the equal sign last. We're like, you know, three plus five equals eight. But these spreadsheets, they think a little differently than us. They put the equal sign first. So I'm gonna put in cell F3, let's go to F3 first, that's right here. That's gonna determine our weight, which is actually, I'll change this. It's not my weight, it's my cat's weight right my 10 pound cat so we're in f3 just like bingo and we are going to enter equals e3 star d3 so we're just going to put in the equal sign e3 star that is shift 8 on your keyboard d3 and i'm going to hit enter and we have a number and what it just did let's look at this formula E3 is what my cat's weight, it's right here, is on Earth. It weighs 10 pounds. It's multiplying that by what the gravity is on Mercury, which is about a third of what it is on Earth. And when I hit enter, it found out that my cat is, you know, weighs about a third on Mercury as it would on Earth. Now, we don't want to go through and do this for each and every row. If I did it again for Venus, I would have to go in and now it would be equals E4 star D4. And I would hit enter. And then I go to the next one, E5 star D5, because I have to change the formula for each row. But let me show you that Google Sheets is smart enough that it knows what you want to do. If you just, when you're done with your formula and you hit enter and you have a number, click on that and right in the corner, this is the third time we've done this, this little blue square. If you click on that and drag it down, it will fix the formula for every row. So I'm gonna do seven math problems right now. I'm gonna do the math for to figure my cat's weight on each planet in about five seconds. Watch this, drag down, let off, done. Just like that. I just figured out my cat's weight on each planet. And what's interesting, my cat's big house, my cat's thick on Jupiter. 23 pounds, that's twice as much. And remember when I told you over here, I said it was about twice, the gravity was about twice as much, you know, on Jupiter as it was on Earth. Well, my cat weighs about twice as much. So that's pretty fun and that's quick. I mean, we did, you know, seven math problems in five seconds. So let's go over here and see how old, old 44 year old Mr. Dean would be on this planet. So I'm gonna go back. In cell I3, enter the formula equals H3 star G3, right there. And remember, all formulas start with an equal sign. So that's equals H3 slash G3. And we put that in I3. So we're gonna go over here to I3. Start with the equal sign, H3, and that's a, a slash, a forward slash. It's down at the bottom of your keyboard. It's got the question mark on it. Um, and so it's shift question mark. 
or no, it's not shift. You just hit the question mark. It's down next to the shift button. Um, and that was, uh, my formula was H3 slash G3, and I hit enter. And you can see right now that it's telling me that if I lived on Mercury, and think about it, that's the closest planet to the sun, I would be 182 years old. 182.5726141 years old. So, and you think about why, why would I be so old? Because, you know, Mercury is really close to the sun, a lot closer than Earth. So a year on Mercury, it's going around a lot quicker than Earth, which is out here, and it takes longer. So I'm going to be older. So you can start to determine, obviously, the further away from the sun that I am, the older that I'm going to get. So I'm going to click on that because I don't want to do that for every planet. So let's use that little blue button now for the fourth time, that little blue square. Click on it. Let's see what my age is on every planet. Drag down to Neptune, done. So you can see on Earth, a good way to check if your formulas worked right, I'm 44 on Earth. The same over here for my cat. If I look at its weight on Earth, it's 10 pounds, that should be right. So let's go back and see um, the formula. This formula takes your age. Yeah, let's look at what it's doing. So right here, it's taking H3, which is my age on Earth, okay? And it's dividing it by how long it takes that planet to travel around the sun. And that's how it's coming up with my age. Now I'm gonna say these numbers right here, those are like, most of your teachers will say, hey, round up to you know two decimal places. I don't, these numbers that have like 10 decimal places, that's confusing to me. I'm gonna highlight all of these numbers and I'm gonna go to format and I'm gonna go to number right here. And I don't know if you notice, if I choose number, it's only got two decimal places. And if I click that, it rounds everything up to two decimal places and it makes those numbers a little easier to recognize and digest. So you can see I'm 182 years old on Mercury but I haven't ever had my first birthday on Neptune. And if you think about it, I'm already 44 and I'm only a fourth of the way to being one years old on Neptune. I would have to be about 160 on Earth to experience one birthday on Neptune. And I don't think that's gonna happen. So let's move on to step five. And now we're gonna make our first graph. So we're gonna graph a column graph about our weight on each planet. And this is fun. So just pay attention. There's a couple of little things we're gonna have to do. Um, this should make sense in a minute. But first, highlight cells A2 through A10. Next, hold down the control key and with the control key held down, highlight F2 through F10. So let's go look at this. We're gonna click on A2 right here, and I'm gonna drag down to A10. Those are highlighted. And then I go over to F2 through F10. The reason you have to hold control, watch this. If I highlight these, well now these over here aren't highlighted. If I highlight these, now this over here isn't highlighted. So I highlight, don't hold control. I'm not holding control. See, I'm gonna click on A2 through A10. I let off my mouse, I'm not holding it. Now I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard. I'm gonna click on F2, and I'm gonna drag down to F10, let off my mouse, let off my keyboard, and I don't know if you can see, but F2 through F10 is selected, and so is the, are the planet names. So we're gonna look at each planet, and then what my cat weighs on those planets. So we've got that. At the top of your screen, click insert then chart. This will automatically insert a column graph. Well, that sounds simple. Insert chart. Oh wow, there it is. Just like what it shows on the picture. Let's keep going. Oh, we're almost done. Look at this. Now you need to finish up your graph. Double click the graph title and change it to my weight on each planet. Do you know how to make it bold and centered? Try it. 
So I'm going to click up here. It says my cat's weight on this planet versus planets. Double click it. We'll call it my cat's weight on each planet. And if you want to bold it, watch this. If I highlight it and it says bold and center, look right over here. Here's the B for bold. And here's the alignment and we can put it right in the center. All right, next step. Double click the vertical axis title, change it to my weight in pounds. So this is your vertical axis. You always want to have an axis title that tells you what these numbers mean. Do those mean grams? Do those mean pounds? Do those mean tons? What do those numbers mean? So if I just double click on this, okay, and you hit backspace, you would say weight in pounds. And notice it just typed it in there, okay? And you can also type it in over here on the right. It says title text, weight in pounds. Isn't that what it said? My weight in pounds. So we could say, you know, cat's weight in pounds. And we could actually go ahead and bold that. And is that it? That's it. So now we named the vertical axis and it really shows up once I bold it, cat's weight in pounds. So let's go back and look at the next one. Double click on the columns of your column graph, change them to whatever color you want using the chart editor on the right hand side of your screen. Ooh, this is fun. I wanna do purple. It's kinda got that galaxy space color that's popular. So I'm gonna double click the blue and look right over here where it says format, color. I'm gonna go in here and let's choose maybe a, ooh, I like it, there's purple. What's next? Finally, double click on the columns of your column graph on the right hand side of your screen in the chart editor. Check the box that says data labels. This will put numbers on your columns. If you see over here, my columns actually have little numbers. It's kind of hard to see, but it actually does show my weight on those planets. So it says double click the columns on the right hand side. Check the box that says data labels. So I'm going to go back in here and double click the column. Look right down here. Data labels. This is your chart editor. See, it says it right here. Click data labels. Boom. That's cool. So it shows exactly how much my cat weighs on each planet. You can see my cat, we all know, weighs 10 pounds on Earth. Perfect. So what does it say to do? Drag your graph underneath your spreadsheet and resize it to be the same width as your spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna drag this down. We click it, drag it right up underneath. I'm gonna make it about as wide as my data table. And we've got our graph. Ooh, that was fun. Let's move on to the next page. This is your second graph. I bet you can guess. We're gonna graph our age on each planet. So let's graph my age on each planet. We're gonna do a line graph this time. So this will show a line graph of your age on each planet. A line graph will be nice for, for graphing this information because you'll be able to kind of see, you know, how your age changes as you move further away from the sun or closer to the sun. So you'll create this graph on your own. So you're gonna to need to highlight cells A2 through A10, then hold that control button and do I2 through I10. So let's try it. Same thing we did before. A2 through A10, I let off my mouse, it's highlighted. Now I'm gonna hold control. I'm gonna go over here and do I2 through I10. Let off my mouse, let off my keyboard, if you notice, there's a blue line around A2 through A10 over here. There's a blue line over here. So now click on insert chart. This will automatically create a column graph. On the right hand side of your screen, change the chart type to a line chart. So we're going to do like we did before. Insert chart. It made another column graph, but we don't want a column graph. So it says that we can change it. So let's see, it says on the right hand side of your screen on chart editor, change chart type to line chart. So I'm gonna go over here on the right. And if you kind of scroll up, 
See where it says that it'll be at the very top over here on the chart editor? Column chart, let's just choose line. And I just say choose the first one. That's simple. So next, double click on the title, change the title to my age on each planet. So we'll double click that, we'll type in there my age on each planet. Notice I'm capitalizing all of these because they're titles. Remember this down here, we can go ahead and bold it because it looks nice. And then we can click here and we can also center it. This is looking great. Double click the line of your graph on the right hand side in the chart editor, select data labels to put a number on your line. Um, on your line. So we're going to put the numbers. Notice in my example, it actually has what my age is during, you know, on each of these planets. So double click the line. So this blue line, I'm going to double click it and we're going to go over here and on the right hand side in chart editor, select data labels. So let's see chart style. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's double click the line again. And I have to scroll down a little. You see this over here? There's a scroll. There's data labels. And it actually put little circles and it tells me what my age is on each planet. And a good way to test this, I'm 44 on Earth. Look right here. I'm 44 on Earth. Drag your my age on each planet line chart underneath your my weight on each planet column chart. Feel free to change the colors and edit the graph however you'd like. Do you know how to change the background? Try it. So I'm going to do what I did before. I'm just going to drag this down right underneath. I'm going to put it right here. And if you notice that you're not getting like the number for Mercury, normally if you just make this a little longer, just see yeah, how I drag that down just a little bit, it'll pop up. Sometimes it's just, you gotta kind of spread it out so it can show you that number. So if I double click this line, I can change the color and maybe I choose pink this time. Um, if you wanna change the background color of your graph, all you need to do is go right somewhere on the white area. If you kind of just double click this, okay? And right in here, and you're gonna scroll up to the very top. So just double click, go up to the top, go to chart style, and you have background color, you can choose a background color. But if you choose black, notice now I can't read my text. So if I double click down here on, you know, where my planet names are, I can change that text to say white. Double click down here, I can change that text color. It's right over here. We can change it to white. And then I can go over here. I can click on the numbers. I can change those text colors to white. And then this axis title, I go over here and I can change those text colors to white. So as you can see, I have everything. This right here is enough to get you an A, okay? Let's go to the final step and we will be finished with our Planet Discovery spreadsheet. Now that you're finished, let's try to jazz up our spreadsheet. Let's add some colors and pictures. So double click on your graph and use the chart editor on the right to edit and change the colors, we already did that. Highlight the cells, columns, and rows, then click on the paint bucket to change the colors of your cells. So here's something, you could click up here and just maybe drag on all these cells. And if you go up here to this paint bucket, you can fill in a color. So let's say I fill that in and maybe a light purple. You wanna make sure that you always keep a dark text and a light background. So if I want these to be like a dark purple, well now I can't read the text. So you might wanna highlight them, click on your text, and make it a different color, maybe like yellow. And I could go down this side, maybe do the same thing. Let's make that text yellow, and let's make the things purple. And then I could maybe go in here 
and make all of the actual data, the numbers, maybe a different color? What if we made those yellow and we made all the text dark purple and maybe bold it and make it stand out? Then we can go down here and change the background color of this. I'm gonna double click the graph. We go up to the very top to chart style. There's the background color. Maybe we make it a light yellow. I don't wanna make it too yellow. And I'm not a big Laker fan, even though this is coming across like that. We have black down here, so we have some colors. So next, highlight any text and change the colors. You can even change the font. We already did that. Look for images to decorate your graphs. Make sure you still see all the data. So if you wanna do some images on your graph, if you just go to insert image, and we do image over cells is fine. We can do a Google image search. And I'm gonna type up here, Mercury. And you're gonna find a picture of Mercury. And I can click that and I can insert it. And it might take a second, but you're gonna get that picture. And we can drag it. And you could put that on top of the actual planet Mercury. And you could add real pictures of um, each planet. Another trick, insert image, we'll say image over cells. And we'll do a Google image search is put in Mercury transparent background. And if you do that, you might get a Mercury that looks like this and you don't have a square around it. So check this out. I think you guys will like this. So I'm gonna delete this picture. But if you look for transparent, you can find these planets that are just round. They look just like the planet almost floating there. And you could add each planet above Let's do one more. Let's look for Venus. Insert image. We're gonna say over cells so we can just drag it. We'll go to Venus, transparent background. See if we see anything. Ooh, these are cool. So we can scroll down. Look at this one. Let's see if that works. Wait for our picture to show up. There it is. Sometimes they take longer than others. They call it the sister planet to Earth. Look at that. Looks really cool. So you can add some pictures. And I even on my example did something kind of silly where I did an insert image, image over cells. And I looked up a bath scale because we were talking about um, weight. So maybe you take a picture of like a scale. Maybe we do this one. We insert it, and you could kind of just drag this up in the corner, since this is kind of about weight, and have a bath scale on there. So that is how you do your planet discovery spreadsheet. We have one final step. Now you're ready to submit your assignment. So, to submit your planet discovery spreadsheet, we turn this in like we've turned in almost everything this year in Canvas. I'm gonna just back out and go back to modules to show you where you turn this in. It's unit seven, planet discovery spreadsheets. It's the very last step of this unit seven. It says planet discovery spreadsheet. It's the one that says it's worth 24 points and has a due date. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click Submit Assignment. And we always, don't paste a link, we only did that one time for our comic books. Go to the middle Google Drive. Don't click the one that says LTI. Go to the middle, click on Google Drive. It'll take a second. And do you remember what we called it right up here? David Dean Planets. Here's what's kinda of cool is there's this search box. Once you click the middle Google Drive, if I just put in the word planets, if you named it right, it's gonna pop right up. I can click it, I link it. Don't forget, it's very important to hit submit. I'm gonna submit it. And a good student will take the five seconds it takes to click submission details. 
and see if the actual one that you want your teacher to grade shows up. And look at that. Here it is. And the graphs will take a second to load. And there is what Mr. Dean will see when he grades it. And that's it. Congratulations. You made your Planet Discovery spreadsheet. And we're ready to move on to Unit 8.